Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, cowboys and cowgirls, and welcome to day number one of rodeo action here at the Canoe Mountain Rodeo section by the British Columbia Rodeo Association. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Clearwater, British Columbia, I'd like to welcome into the rodeo arena, packing our flags so proudly for all of us with the British Columbia Rodeo Association. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the Rhythm Riders. Give them a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, our Rhythm Riders here this afternoon as they get themselves all set up for our grand entry this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to introduce to you the fine folks that make this rodeo run so well each and every year. Ladies and gentlemen, your president and the icon of the Vail Mountain Canoe Mountain Rodeo, Mr. Bob Griffin, here this afternoon. Along with his lovely wife, Lorna, if it wasn't for them, ladies and gentlemen, the rodeo would not be possible here at the Canoe Mountain Rodeo. Your stock contractor this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Salmon Arm, British Columbia. Welcome with the D&B Rodeo Company, Mr. Dale DeJunker and the lovely Barbie McDonald. Your pickup men this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, from out of the Cash Creek country, ladies and gentlemen, a man that's a long time rodeo veteran and icon of the sport of rodeo. He's a team roper extraordinaire, and he taught most of the youngsters in VCRA rodeo how to ride and how to rope. Welcome, Mr. Archie Williams. Our next young cowboy, ladies and gentlemen, also a pickup man this afternoon, and the son of that cowboy, Archie Williams. He's a longtime horse trainer, farrier, and father of three lovely young ladies. In the barrel racing, we welcome Mr. Neil Antoine. <laughs> Sorry, is that, that is Neil Antoine, you betcha. They are two of the best in the business, ladies and gentlemen. As we go on to the tough and tough guys of the rodeo, your bullfighters this afternoon, two cowboys putting their lives in the line for every, every one of our cowboys and cowgirls in the junior steer riding event, and of course in the bull riding. The first young cowboy, ladies and gentlemen, from Charlie Lake, British Columbia, a young man that started his rodeo career on the pro rodeo chuck wagon tour, went on to ride and steer, and on to professional bull riding as well. Now a long time bullfighter and stock contractor, Mr. Ron, Ron Frieza. Working side by side with him this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, a young man that started his rodeo career fighting bulls and what is one of the most outstanding bullfighters you'll see in Western Canada. Now residing in Douglas Lake, British Columbia, Mr. Chance Holmes. Your rodeo judges this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, two of the finest cowboys they ever step up to any rodeo arena. These guys, their job is to make sure that each and every one of our cowboys and cowgirls get a fair shake at each and every one of the events that they compete in here this weekend. The first cowboy, ladies and gentlemen, from Big Creek, British Columbia. He's a long-time hunter guide. He's also a cattle rancher and an extraordinary former bull riding champion many times over, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gord Puhalo. Working side by side with him, ladies and gentlemen, a cowboy with a former bull riding champion himself with the British Columbia Rodeo Association. Now he's hauling cattle all across the province of British Columbia and on into Alberta. Welcome, Mr. Adam Clark. 
Your rodeo timers working with me this weekend, ladies and gentlemen. The first time we've had the pleasure of working with this lovely lady. We, we welcome Dale Soffel. We thank you for being here, Dale. And our other timer this weekend, ladies and gentlemen, from Cash Creek, British Columbia, Leanne Lama. Down in the rodeo office, a lady working so hard and diligently behind the scenes. We'll see very little of her this weekend, but ladies and gentlemen, her hard work and diligence is always appreciated at each and every one of our rodeos. We have Mrs. Diana Pujolo. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at this, this time, we ask that you please all rise for your Canadian National Anthem and the Cowboys' Prayer. standing for the Cowboys prayer. Well, Heavenly Father, we pause, ever mindful of the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We ask that you be with us at this rodeo, and we pray that you will guide us in the arena of life. We do not ask not to draw around and shoot fighting horses, nor to never break a barrier. We do not ask for special favors. We do not ask for all day late runs, or not to draw a steer that won't pay. Well, help us, Lord, to live our lives in such a manner that when we make the last inevitable ride to the country up there, where the grass grows lush green and stirrup high, and the water runs cool, clear, and deep, that you, as our last judge, will tell us that our entry fees are paid. Amen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rodeo this weekend. And once again, here's the lovely ladies from the Rhythm Riders of Clearwater, British Columbia. You'll see these ladies back in half here shortly, ladies and gentlemen, to show, show you their routine. The best exhibitionists here this afternoon. You're not going to whistle some opening act known as Daredevil Divas from Ottawa, Alberta. These two very talented ladies, ladies and gentlemen, are here to entertain you this weekend. A left walk into the arena, ladies and gentlemen. The first cowgirl will be Dana Powell riding Cardew. Will be the first cowgirl in this afternoon. <laughs>
going to go with Carly Borley. Doing the one foot stand. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, this young lady is only eight years old, all the way from Ottawa, Alberta. And that youngster has a whole lot of talent and a whole lot of years to get nothing but better and better. Give her a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, that youngster, only eight years of age. And next up, ladies and gentlemen, the last trick we call the Daredevil Evo signature trick. And I'm going to do this. Give her a great big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for these two talented young ladies. But don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, these girls will be back at the halftime show this afternoon. Dana and Carly will also be available this afternoon for pictures with the horses and signed sign autograph. And ladies and gentlemen, give them a big round of applause once again for eight-year-old Carly Boyle. Forty, sorry. And her horse scored. And 18-year-old Dana Powell and her horse Cardu. But this time we'll clear the equipment out of the arena and get ready for the Rhythm Riders. The lovely ladies from Clearwater, El British Columbia will be the next to go, ladies and gentlemen. So please prepare yourselves and get ready for some more action here this afternoon. We just got to clear up the arena for the ladies from Clearwater, British Columbia. Give them a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, the Rhythm Riders from Clearwater, British Columbia.
a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, once again, that's our Rhythm Rider. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, give them a great big round of applause. You'll see the ladies back here later on this afternoon at our halftime show this afternoon. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we go down to the bucket shoot. We've got to clear the wrap out of the arena and let our pickup men, the two of the finest, you'll see in action here this afternoon. The job of these guys is to rescue our cowboys at the after the eight second horn and to clear the horses out of the arena in the bareback riding event. Have the spurs over the point of the horse's shoulders. Have the back feet come down, the front feet of a horse go up in the air. And that's when the cowboy spurs from the point of the horse's shoulders back to that suitcase shaped handle. All the cowboy has to hang on to this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, is a rawhide handle. It looks like a lot like a suitcase handle, but that is all he has to hang on to. Jared Marshall had to ride it with the left hand down, and this cowboy, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the toughest cowboys you'll see in the sport of bareback riding. And this cowboy can ride a bareback horse like no other. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the cowboys you're going to witness this afternoon. He's going to be riding two horses this afternoon. He's on his number one horse, known as Swampy Joe. Swampy Joe is the name of the horse from the DMB Rodeo Company. A tough horse to ride, and Jared Marshall's got his hand in the suit rigging. Not the hands, so let me have him in crowd. Come alive, cheer on! And that cowboy across that rodeo arena for the second ride. Give my hand. He's lost his hat and his sunglasses. Archie Williams gets them safely to the ground. Give him a big round of applause. And Jared Marshall, your sunglasses are right by your hat there, cowboy. And the judges score the cowboy 1 to 25 in his riding ability and a 1 to 25 on the fucking ability of that horse. Each one of the judges score on that way. They tabulate the scores for a possible 100 points of the highest points the cowboy can score. Adam Clark, Gort Hollow tabulated this time to come up with a score. The drum rolls and the Cowboys do their adding. Adam Clark. A 70 point ride, ladies and gentlemen, a 7-0 for Jared Marshall and the first Cowboy to ride a bareback horse. 
the first cowboy to make an eight second ride and that's all that all so that is the next cowboy to go winchester one of the strong sorrel horses from the dmv rodeo company this horse leads to the gentleman on his knees off i'm pretty sure barbie's out there hand feeding him probably even in our rodeo arena this weekend they have the Quick, fast buck in action to be a bareback horse. And they are the toughest to ride as a bareback ride. The event is the most physically demanding event on a cowboy. You get a lot of strain on the collarbone, the wrist, and the elbow. Tyrone Hudson lies the head, so let me have Winchester, that roan horse. And hang on, Tyrone. Oh, off the side. And not what the cowboy want to give a big round of applause. The gentleman for Tyrone Hudlin out of Williams Lake Country. And unfortunately, a no score for the Cowboy this afternoon in a no score. You're going to see some bareback riding action later on, just before the junior steer riding event. But Jared Marshall comes back for horse at number two this afternoon. As we clear that roan horse, Winchester, out of your rodeo ring in the hole here this afternoon. It's fast time. Jonah Antoine charging out hard and fast on that yellow calf. He's got himself a good catch and crowd come alive, help him out. Get the adrenaline going. The more you're hooting the holler, the more you cheer. Help the Cowboys get the job done. Jonah Antoine, you are the Cowboy. Give him a big round of applause and that's how it's done in the tie down room. He's the first cowboy to go. He has a lot of pressure on his shoulders. He knows he has to be fast. He doesn't know exactly how fast it's going to take to be the champion in the rodeo. You want to have that calf focus on the far end of the arena for when that cowboy nods. He wants that calf to get charging out the fastest possible time. Joe is on to charge it down hard and fast across. Throws a loop. Comes up with an empty rope. Give him a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. It takes a lot of timing and unfortunately it didn't work out for the cowboy and in no time for the cash creek man joel is nardy land brown's getting himself set up in that barrier box rope is stretched across he's getting his rope all ready to go here this afternoon 11 and 9 the only qualifier so far in this event and ladies and gentlemen don't be afraid to hoot and holler you paid in the gate that is your time you can have as much fun as you want on the rodeo ground you can hoot you can holler you can cheer for all that you want for the cowboys and cowgirls at any time Len Brown throws a long loop down and not often you see that cowboy go home with an empty loop. Give him a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, to Glenn Brown of Grafton, British Columbia. The weather's hot, the cowboys are smoking hot as well as they're charging down Travis Antoine. Throws a long loop down, ends up with an empty rope, but takes a no time. Give him a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, that's all he's going to take home this weekend. Is that applause? But that applause means a lot to a cowboy and cowgirl as they travel down that rodeo trail. The tie down rope is brought to you by Kinder Morgan and Robbins Auto. Charging down, Derek Mobs, he's got us on the black cap. Crowd come alive. This could be fast, it could be furious. And it's your hooting and hollering that gets the job done. Derek Mobs, he's done. Give him a big round of applause. The black cap must remain tied for a total of six seconds. An order for time to be called, and that is with Adam Clark and that bay horse is doing the stopwatch in hand, making sure that the cap does remain tied for a total of six seconds. Adam gives a nod. As we tap it in our times for the cowboy. A 10 and 9. And ladies and gentlemen, there's your new leader right there. He's the 2013 finals qualifier. Got himself back to the barrier box. And the job of this cowboy is to come flying out of that barrier box at breakneck speed. Grab a longhorn steer by the horn and have all four feet facing in the same direction. On the far side of him was the lady that does the hazing for him. Her job is to keep that steer running straight down the rodeo arena. Of the instinct of a steer, when you have a cowboy coming down off the side of his horse trying to grab you by the horn, it's a turn away. Allison Everett on the Palomino horse doing the hazing, and she's here to, to keep that steer running straight down your rodeo arena. Hold the cowboy, Colton Manuel, getting some help down in that barrier box. That bay horse has got to be focused on the steer. And he Colton Manuel now the headset outside, charges down hard and fast. Things not working out for that cowboy. New Joel Ilgnard, he'll be the next cowboy to go from Cash Creek. Like I said earlier, he's been in the winner's seat. He's the cowboy that won Vernon. He's the cowboy that won Vanderhoof. He was fourth at the Barrier True River Rodeo, and he was sixth at the Williams Lake Indoor. This cowboy can wrestle steer. He's one of them big strapping kind of cowboys. A 700 pound longhorn steer looks at this man and just kind of sighs with grief. As he knows what that cowboy gets him by the horns, he's going down to the ground in one heck of a hurry. And Joel is not in the steer wrestling event brought to you by Alpine Country, Reynolds and Best Western Hotel. He's got himself a longhorn steer. Crowd come alive, help him out. That's how she's done the bad news, Joel is 
You broke the barrier, you got a 10 second penalty added on to your time and not what he wanted to hear. But give him a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, just the same. He's the first man to make a qualified run. That was Joel in not in Cash Creek. A four and seven plus ten gives the total running time of fourteen and seven. A fourteen and seven, the total running time. Saddlebron riding an event down there, and he'll be representing British Columbia in that event tomorrow afternoon for the final ride off. As we send all of our wishes and well wishes and pats in the back to the Cowboys. Unfortunately, he's not here this weekend. The next Cowboy, Andy Farmer's got that big red longhorn steer by the horn, throws him down to the ground. Andy Farmer, big strong strapping cowboy, clean on the barrier. And that's what it takes for him out, and that's what you see in that man right there. Andy Farmer, and he kind of saunters off, that steer saunters off. And that's how it's all done, as we tap it in a score for the Cowboy. That was Andy Farmer of Savannah. A six and eight, and Andy Farmer, you are the new leader at this time with a six and eight. I'd like to see you. John Davies charging down across that rodeo arena, reaching down, grabs that longhorn steer by the horn. He's got himself a wrestling match. Crowd come alive. Help him out. Help him. Help him. Help him out. John Davies. You got him done. Give him a big round of applause. Feet on the barrier. And that's what you call a whole lot of man and grab the whole lot of longhorn stubborn rubber neck steer. On a 12 and 4, good enough for second spot so far with a 12 and 4 for the Victoria Cowboy, John Davies. Ladies and gentlemen, that completes the steer wrestling event brought to you by Alpine Country Rentals and the Best Western Hotel. We now go down to the breakaway roping event brought to you by the Super 8 Motel. We thank you for all of our great sponsors. The young cowgirl Fallon Fosbury should be followed by Kristen Bell of Houston, British Columbia will be on deck. Parika Wyeth of Lone Butte will be in the hole. Barry Roper stretched across and Fallon Fosbury on the roan horse getting herself set up down at the far end of the Erodi Arena. And follow this section of the breakaway rope and we come back to the bareback riding and Union Steer riding. Fallon Fosbury charging down hard and fast, throws a long, long loop. Ends up with an empty rope and takes herself a no time. Give her a big round of applause and a no time for the cowgirl, Fallon Fosbury. She's the next one you want to watch in action on that big gray horse down at the far end. Trying to be the first one to make a qualified run and the first one to take home all the money. I see we also have some young ladies in the grandstand selling 50-50 tickets. So at any time, ladies and gentlemen, grab a hold of them. Your chance to take home some cash here this weekend. Barry Roper stretched across and now you got a lady on that gray horse to get in focus on that steer to come charging out of that barrier box at breakneck speeds. Oh, the head to the outside. Crystal Bell charging hard and fast down across that rodeo arena. Throw the loop down. And in no time, the judges say, a no time for Kristen Bell, and a no time. Didn't make a complete head catch, and unfortunately, a no time. But this young lady, she won Vanderhoof Rodeo. She won the Barrier True Grip Rodeo, and she won Vernon Rodeo. A young lady that's been in the winner's seat for quite some time, and I do believe she won a whole lot of money in the Bella Cooler Rodeo as well. She's here this weekend to shine and show you all how it's done in the breakaway roping. Rika Wyatt, the lone mule, will be the next one to go. Morgan Fosbury, a parent, will be on deck, and Archie Williams, the icon of rodeo, will be in the hole in the last and bottle. Breakaway roper before we go down to the bucket chutes for that last and bottle bareback rider and the junior steer riders. Once again, this is the breakaway roping event brought to you by the Super 8 Motel. Thank you, Super 8 Motel, for your sponsorship. Barrier rope is stretched across and our young cowboy is ready to go here this afternoon. <laughs> young cowgirl, sorry, Rika Wyatt. This young lady, like I said earlier, has been a superstar this, this season so far. She's had four wins so far this season down that rodeo trail. Charges down that rodeo arena, throws them all loop and comes up with an empty one. Not often that happens to her. Give her a great big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, to Rika Wyatt of Lone Butte at a no time. And now we're down to Morgan Fosbury, a mayor in British Columbia, will be the next cowgirl to go. Morgan Fosbury. Morgan Fosbury down at the far end, getting herself back to the barrier box. The rope is stretched across for the cowgirl. 
Try to be the one to make the first qualified run of the afternoon. Nodger hits it outside, charging down hard and fast across here. Rudy Arita, she got a catch, she breaks away. And that's how it's done, a nice clean run for Morgan Fosbury. As we tap it at her time, we come back to you with Archie William. With well, a three and nine, ladies and gentlemen, a three and nine. A nice qualified run and a fast time for Morgan Fosbury with a 3.9. Now go down to Archie Williams, ladies and gentlemen, the icon of rodeo. His cowboy's done just about everything possible on the back of a horse that any man can do. He's the man you want to watch, ladies and gentlemen, of cowboy in his early 70s. And he rides, he ropes daily. And this cowboy's in better shape than 90% of our competitors here this weekend. This is Archie Williams of Cash Creek. We'll leave the last and final breakaway roper here this afternoon. Before we go down to the bareback riding and the junior steer riders. So junior steer riders and bareback rider, get yourself set up. Get ready to ride as Archie Williams is the last and final competitor to go in the breakaway roping. Barrier rope is stretched across. And ladies and gentlemen, this man is fast with a rope in hand. If you've got a camera, this is the cowboy you want to get focused on this time, ladies and gentlemen. You know when Archie nods his head, it's going to be fast, it's going to be furious, throws a loop down, and oh, come down with empty rope, but take the top of no tire, give him a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, in a no tire. Got off of that half of that veteran cowboy, ladies and gentlemen, in a no tire. On the back of a bareback horse, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe it's approximately 90% of the horses he gets on, he rides for eight seconds. And you're going to see the cowboy in action right shortly as we clear the cows out of the arena. And come back to you with some more rodeo action here this afternoon. And we're getting ready for Jared Marshall. He's the next cowboy to go here this afternoon. This cowboy leads the gentleman only has to hang on to the back of a bareback horse with his own sheer brute strength. Hang on to that suitcase shaped handle made out of rawhide. No one has a lighting goes trap. He goes out of the sits, he goes underneath the horse, which is hard girth. It's all pulled tight and held into place for the cowboy to hang on to for eight seconds. But it takes a ride, a bareback horse. And Jared Marshall, ladies and gentlemen, is a man that is very hard to throw down to the ground. But you got a horse that can throw this cowboy down to the ground, you know you got one of the top bucket horses in Western Canada. But when you're up against one of the top competitors, competitors in Western Canada, he won Kiss the Ox Rodeo this year, and he's back here to win Vailmont. He's a cowboy, ladies and gentlemen, that when he gets on the back of a bareback horse, you know he's going to make some money. Jared Marshall is the cowboy on that horse, the one of burnt timber, one of the big bay horses from the DB Rodeo Company. And you got to remember, ladies and gentlemen, the cowboy's going to have to hang on tight. He's got a spur at the same time. His spurs must be the, over the point of the horse's shoulders, the first jump out of the bucket chute. And Jared Marshall's got his hand in the big ring and nods his head and says, let me have him. Bert Timmer, the horse, and Jared Marshall, the cowboy, lean back and ride him like he can. Mr. Marshall putting up a heck of a bareback ride. And this is trouble. Not often you see that cowboy in trouble like that, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, 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 hey. Judges, what do you say, Mr. Clark? Does they say a double grab? And a no score, unfortunately, Jared Marshall had a whole lot of trouble. And not often that happens at a cowboy, ladies and gentlemen. Give him a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Jared Marshall still currently in the lead of that 70 point ride so far on his first horse. Had a little bit of tough luck on his second horse. As we get ready for some more Wild West action here this afternoon in the Junior Steer Riding. And the Chaco Valley Rodeo Association Junior Steer Riding brought to you by. Check one, two, three, four. Our next young cowboy to go, Michael Jorgensen. will be the next cowboy to go here this afternoon. Michael Jorgensen, a young man from out of William Lake, British Columbia, the junior steer rider, brought to you by Alex Osichuk Farm. We thank you, Alex, for your sponsorship here this afternoon. This young cowboy, Michael Jorgensen, will be the next cowboy to go.
And eight-year-old Carly Borey, all the way from Ottawa, Alberta, ladies and gentlemen, doing a superb job. At this time, it's near the arena. Get ready, if you do believe. In the, in the pack horse race this afternoon from Vailmont, British Columbia, we have the Wild Rosies, Packers Melody Brown. Where are you, Melody? Give a wave to the crowd. Let them know you're here. Oh, they call themselves Wild Rosies, what I got written down here. The Ramblin' Rosies and the Wild Rosies, okay. Melody Brown, Katie Elliott, are you down there? Give a wave, let us know. And Kelsey Griffin, we all know her, Kelsey. They are team number one. Team number two from the Vailmont, British Columbia, we have the Team Snow Farmers. I'm not sure if I can pronounce this right or not. So I want... Walden, is that right? Okay, we got team number two, Packer, no, Tony Parisi, and Amelia Cup. They are team number two, so ladies and gentlemen, pick your team. And that's how it's going to be this afternoon for the pack horse race. The idea is they must take the pack saddles off the horses, place them down on the ground. As we start them up, they throw the pack saddles and panniers on the tie down and hitch. Mount the saddle horse and race around the barrel and back to the far end in the fastest possible time. The team, of course, that does this in the fastest time with a diamond hitch in place will, of course, take home all the money here this weekend. Back saddles are off, saddle horses are unsaddled. Now, Tony, can you remember how to do all this? You got a whole bunch of young ladies depending on you, you know that. And no matter what goes on, Tony, you are the only guy down there, it's gonna be your fault. You know that. No matter how it goes, you're the one to blame. Team number one and team number two. Are you guys ready? Are you ready, Tony? Oh, you need a minute, do you? Why did I know it was going to be you wanting a minute? Are you ready, ladies? On your mark. Get set and go. We got ourselves a pack horse race. So pack horse racers, everybody's put, getting things ready to go here. Tony sorting things out. Yes, Tony, that is a saddle pad. That is a pack saddle. And they're getting it all in gear and letting, they're all in a hurry. Melody Brown, Katie Elliott on the far side, packing up the pack horse. Kelsey Griffin saddled up her saddle horse, and it's all going fast. And ladies and gentlemen, both teams are pretty close to being even at this time. In the pack horse race, I'd like to thank Snow Farmers. They are the sponsor of the buckles for the pack horse race. We thank you very much, Snow Farmers. And following the pack horse race, we go with the ladies' barrel racing. So ladies and gentlemen, following the pack horse race, we go with the ladies' barrel racing event. are being thrown across and our teams are getting ready to go here this afternoon. Our young lady, Saliwa, 
bounded up. Got to bring him around the barrel in the fastest time possible. Around the barrel, bring him on down. Mounted up on the bay horse. Around the barrel and give them all a big round of applause, our pack horse racers here this afternoon. Tony, I do believe you were beat again. Give them all a great big round of applause, the winners, ladies and gentlemen, Melody Brown, Katie Elliott, Kelsey Griffin on the winners in the pack horse race here this afternoon. Well, that concludes the pack horse race. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please bear with us. As we set up our arena and come back to you with some barrel racing action here this afternoon. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as we continue on our roster here this afternoon, we now go down at this time, ladies and gentlemen, to the Regency Dodge Triangle Ladies Barrel Racing event, brought to you by Yellowhead Helicopters and Williams Brothers Farm. The first cowgirl to go is Amati Cash Creek, British Columbia. We go with Colleen Duggan. We'll be the first cowgirl to go, and you be Duggan, out of Cash Creek, charging the barrel number one. Across that road, you're really looking for barrel number Two. She can get the job done. It's Colleen Duggan all the way from Cash Creek charging home here this afternoon. Give her a big round of applause with a running time of 14.561. Go Marlo Pause Bear and Mary DC Calvin will be the next Calvin to go here this afternoon. She'll be followed by Kia Manuel of 150 Mile House on deck. Shale McLeod will be in the hole. Marlo Pause Bear out around barrel number one across that road. You're really looking for barrel number two. Yeah, that's 
I'll switch goes. to the intermission though. Thanks, Bruce. Carrying on the ground, barrel number one across that road to your rear for barrel number two. Left hand turn on two. That's all. Horse not wasting any space, and that's how it's done. He got a lot of speed in her round three. Give her a big round of applause. She heads it home. Terry Farmer with a running time of 14.930. A 14.930. Here in the speed performance this afternoon. If you enjoy barrel racing, keep following the blue ride this afternoon. We have a whole lot more barrel racing. As a Katrina Day. So a horse for barrel number two. Left hand turn on two down to the far end for number three, that third and final barrel. Give her a big round of applause. She brings it on home, ladies and gentlemen. This is Carly Wardrop. Well, they're running down to 16, 361 and 16, 361. We now go down to Callie Hume and William Blake. Callie Hume and William Blake, Calgary, the next one to go here this afternoon. Charging it hard to pass for barrel number one across the far side of that arena for barrel number two. Right hand turn on two down to the far end for number three, the third and final barrel. A nice clean run to the cowgirl, giving her a big round of applause. She brings it home. Callie Hugh with a big time run of 15, 0 4 7 15, 0 4 7. Our next cowgirl will go be Brianna Billy out of William Blake for his Columbia will be the next one to go Brianna Billy. William Blake, cowgirl will be the next one to go. Talk to Sykes will be on deck. Emma Langevin will be. Brianna Billy on a paint horse, jump charging in for barrel number one. Across your rodeo arena looking at barrel number two on the left hand, turn on two. Paint horse digging in deep and hard for number three. The third and final barrel right hand, two good left hand, turn on three. Give her a big round of applause. This is Brianna Billy, William Blake Cowgirl. With a running time of 15, 5, 8, 6, and 15, 5, 8, 6. And I'll go down to Tasha Sykes to be the next cowgirl to go from Zavanoff. This a few years ago, ladies and gentlemen, and it was her mother that won the $50,000 prize at the Calgary Stampede. And this cowgirl's got barrel racer all the way through her bloodline that just takes to be a Tasha star. This is young Tasha Sykes. She was a 2013 final champion. This young lady won the barrier True Grip Rodeo in Vanderhoof. She was second at Kiss Beyond, third at Princeton and Jeremy. And today she stopped the clock and is the fastest time so far on the running down of 14. Of 
a 16054. 16 0 Nevada competitor in the junior barrel race. And here on me performance, that'd be Sophia Smith of Gas Street. She's the 2014 Ashcroft the District Damp Rodeo Princess. She's the first represent Rodeo Well all across British Columbia. She's the next cow rodeo. Then we get a break around the barrels and come back to you with the Pee Wee Barrel Racing. So all you Pee Wee Barrel Racers, get ready to go. This is Sophia Smith uh, right out of Gas Street Country. Sophia Smith on ground, barrel number one. Look at her drop that arena for barrel number two. Left hand turn on two. And that's just that horse goes out around the center barrel. The round number three. Give her a big round of applause for Sophia Smith. Here this afternoon with a running time of 15, 2, 7, 4, 15. 2, 7, 4 is the running time for Sophia Smith. I'll be the first call girl to go. Madeline Bozabon. She'll be the first cowgirl to go and lead the general. This is where a lot of our young cowboys and cowgirls get their start in rodeo. They're all 10 years of age and under at the Pee Barrel Racing event. This is young man with claws of on of Salvador. They'll be followed by Gracie Antoine of Cash Creek will be on deck. Erica Ignace of Salvador will be in the hole. This young man with claws of on down to the third and final barrel makes a late turn on number three. Give her a big round of applause. She had the on home this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Madeline Pazabon with a running time of 19 290 The young Gracie Antoine, this young lady is the one that won batter hoop earlier this season. She was second at the Barrier True Grit, and she's here to be a champion this weekend as well. Gracie Antoine, a right hand turn on one across that rodeo arena for barrel number two. Of the Clover League pattern around two down the far end for barrel number three, the third and final barrel. And a tight turn on three, you're a big round of applause, Gracie Antoine of Cash Creek. For the running time of 16.097, we'll be the next young lady to go kill this afternoon, followed by Caitlin Lulu on deck. Emma Antoine will be in the hole, and Clay Farmer will be the last and final Pee Wee Barrel Racer of our main performance here this afternoon. Erica Ignace, having on Calgary, on and around barrel number one across that rodeo arena, looking for barrel number two towards the grandstand, out and around two, down to the forehand, down to the bucket shoes for barrel number three. And a nice turn on three, give a big round of applause, she heads it on home. Erica Ignace with a running time of 16, 419, a 16, 419 is the running time. These horses, like any five do that, I think know exactly what's expected of them. And they get a little bit of sprint tight nerves, wanting to go a little faster than the young riders ready for it. There's a young Caitlin Lillow charging in hard and fast for barrel number one. Long legged, long back horses, a lot of speed under them. They head into barrel number two. Tight turn on two down to the far end for number three. This young cowgirl's got it figured out. She knows how to ride it. Headed on home, Caitlin Cowgirl riding home for the running time of 15 966. A 15 966, and that is the moon leader so far for 15 966. Our next cowgirl will go, ladies and gentlemen, to week Emma Antoine. You saw her older sister Gracie at this event. And you saw her older sister Harley in the juniors. This is young Emma Antoine, the youngest of Neil and Michelle Antoine's children, fought of the Gas Creek Country. And Neil is one of our pet pickup men here this weekend. This is young Emma Antoine. Follow this young lady, we rake around our barrels and come back to you with some more barrel rakes in action here this afternoon. With Emma Antoine charges into barrel number one. Right hand turn on one of the big bay horse looking across that arena for barrel number two. And a left hand turn on two down the far end for the third and final barrel out and around number three. Emma Antoine's hitting up and riding pretty. Give her a big ride. She hits on home with a running time of 18, 247, 18, 247. I'll be the next cowboy in the last and final of the Pee Wee Barrel Racers. Clay Farmer, right hand turn on number one. And this kid knows how to ride. He's a speed demon, this young man. He's around number one. Look at the far end for number three. And around. And Sophia Smith will be in the hole. A young lady starting in her. This is a young Katie Holland out of Barrier, British Columbia. Got a good clean run happening so far. You can't get any closer than that. Katie Holland coming back in the second section of Serpentine Pattern. Out and around the last hole. Headed for home, Katie Holland. Well, the running time this afternoon is 24 177 plus. In the total running time of 34 177 of 34 177. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we go down to our next cowgirl on our we go with Hannah Vander Wolf to be the next cowgirl to go with Hannah Vander Wolf. All right here from them on how many you know Hannah? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you know her, she's your hometown cowgirl's wife, picking a hoot and a holler, scream, jump up and down, 
second set to that serpentine pattern. Down to the far end, he gives her a big round of the ball. Of 40.432. Our next cover of the goal will be Sophia Smith of Cat Street. will be the next cover of the goal. Sophia Smith, Cat Street, Cowgirl, followed by Kathy Penfold on deck. Harley Antoine will be in the hole. It's Sophia Smith in the junior bullpen event. Brought to you by Chris Griffin Trucking. We thank you very much, Chris Griffin Trucking. We thank you, Chris, for all the hard work you do behind the scenes. Saw him earlier this morning working hard. Thank you for all the hard work. Smith got a good run happening so far down the far end, starting back in a certain time pattern. Sophia Smith is she this young power girl, is power girl enough, and she knows how to get the job done. Give her a big round of applause when she hits it over at home with a running time of 24, 3 2 3 and 24, 3 2 3. That is the new leader so far. And now we got a Cassie Penfold on the new Hazel Tunnel, be the next caliber to go. Cassie Penfold on the new Hazel Tunnel, British Columbia, comes charging into the barrier. Getting the job done, cutting in real close, not wasting any time as she turns back. 
for the second section of the serpentine pattern. And give her a big round of applause. She heads it on home for Gracie Antoine. While the running time of a 26.482 plus 10 gives the total running time of a 36.482. A 36.482. The running go. We go with Mavin Pazabon out of Barrier British. Oh, sorry, out of Salmon will be the next one to go. Mavin Pazabon. Salmon British Columbia. Calgary will be the next one to go. Followed by Emma Antoine on deck. Emma Antoine will be the last and final Phoebe Polebender here in the main performance of our rodeo here this afternoon. This is Madeline Pothabon, this young lady you saw earlier in action in the barrel racing, here to shine in the pole bending. Takes that left hand turn on the serpentine pattern, started back to the first section. All's going well so far for the cowgirl, down to the far end, makes a quite tight right hand turn, and comes on back for the second section, makes that turn the left turn. Now a right, and a quick left end on home, give her a big round of applause, Madeline Pothabon. Well, the running time this afternoon of a 26.608 plus 5 gives the total running time of a 31.608. A 31.608 is the running time for Madeline Bothabaugh. Back half your, your wardrobe in, I guess. And a wallet is a little bit smaller, but too big for most of us guys to pack around anyhow. And this young lady is Emma Antoine, the youngest of the Antoine ladies. And this young lady is here to show her older sisters how old Benny's supposed to be done. Makes the left hand turn. Now the quick right, left, right. Oh, Emma, hang on, Calgaro. You're a Calgaro. You can get the job done. Emma Antoine down to the far end. Some charging back. The second sex that serpentine pattern. Emma Antoine down to the far end. Give her a big round of applause. She had it on home hill this afternoon for Emma Antoine. And unfortunately, at no time, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our pole betting here this afternoon for the main performance. We we'll clear the poles out of the arena and get ready for the junior breakaway roping event. Uh, Dustin Spears, Gracie Antoine. I do believe that Great Dustin's not here. I do believe that we go to Gracie Antoine. Gracie Antoine getting herself back to the barrier box, getting set and ready to ride here this afternoon. The young Gracie Antoine with the junior breakaway open event and on the head. She's head outside after that white face deer charging across that road to arena. Throws the loop down with Taysis up in no time. Give her a big round of applause and in no time for Gracie Antoine. Our next competitor, Brianna Billy, got herself back to the barrier box, getting set and ready to ride here this afternoon. Rope stretch across and she's ready to try to be the first qualifier in the Junior Break Beer Open event, which is brought to you by Dulles and Irene Blackman. We thank them for the, the, for the sponsorship here this weekend. Always a great pleasure to be around these people. Off their heads and outside, Brianna Billy charging down across that rodeo arena, throw the loop down, take herself in no time, give her a big round of applause, and in no time is all she's going to take home for Brianna Billy. And on the last and final competitor, Riding her grandpa, this Palomino horse. This cowgirl is ready to ride and ready to shine. This young cowgirl, she won Kiss Me Off earlier this season. Was second at the Barrier True Grit. Rodeo second at Vanderhoof and then Princeton. Fourth at the William Blake Indoor. She's been making money in this event and she's here to make money here this weekend. The Hardy Antoine, all their heads outside, charging down across that rodeo arena. Throws a loop and she's got herself a catch, breaks away. Give her a big round of applause. Like a clean run for the cowgirl from out of Cash Creek. A five and three in the only qualified run so far with a five and three for Hardy Antoine and a 5.3. Was he in the first team to go? Aaron Palmer, Mark Pondavon. Mark Pondavon was a winner in Princeton earlier this season. He was second at the Barrier True Grit. <laughs> That is how it's going to be, ladies and gentlemen. These Cowboys know how to win. They know how to make some money in this event. Aaron Palmer also won at Princeton won, and was also fourth at Princeton. And they are the first two to go. Aaron Palmer, Mark Pazamon, these two Cowboys have been roping steers together and they know how to get the job done. 
He couldn't get fast and furious and his team could have the capability of roping a steer in approximately five seconds. Aaron Palmer on the head end of things. Mark Baltimore on the heel, nod the head. They say outside, charging down across that rodeo arena. Takes a long loop, throws one down, and comes up with an empty rope. They take themselves in no time. Give them a big round of applause and in no time, unfortunately, for the team of Aaron Palmer and Mark Baltimore is already in the box. PJ heading towards the barrier box to get pulled his hat down tight. He's not going to lose that thing. And then he wins storm when he comes flying out of the barrier box. He's, he's ready to go. He can charge it in and hoping to make speed of about 30 miles per hour to grab a longhorn steer by the horn. It's all right down a split second time and the rope is stretched across. You need that steer focused on the far end of the arena. You need the horse to be focused on that steer and the cowboys to be focused on everything around him. On his head, BJ is not in charge of down, goes for the horn catch. Down as it makes the turn. Jonah Antoine throws the rope down to set of heels. And that's how she's done. Clean all the way across for our cowboys. For BJ Isnardi and Jonah Anton, a pair of cousins from out of the Cash Creek country. At 8 and 0, the running time. At 8 and 0 is the running time for BJ Isnardi, Jonah Antoine at 8 and 0. As Daryl Eustache and Mark Cosmon get ready to go, they'll be followed by Aaron Palmer. Neil Antoine will be on deck. Rika Wise, Quinn Gavaga will be in the hole. Darrell's got himself back to the barrier box, the rope stretched across. Strictly a head down thing. Novice heads outside. Darrell loose that, charging hard and fast, throws a long loop. Dallies and makes the turn. Mark Pazavon goes down for a set of heels, throws a loop. Comes up with an empty rope, but they take a no time. Give him a big round of applause for our ropers, and a no time this afternoon. Services, Snow Farmers, and LDMR Road Maintenance. We thank you all for your sponsorship here this weekend. As the barrier rope is stretched in front of Aaron Palmer as he gets that big bay horse back into the barrier box. Neil Antoine on the far side will pick up the heels here this evening. They know the head they say outside Aaron Palmer goes for the horn catch. Down as it makes the turn, Neil throws the rope down for the set of heels. That's how she's done. Looks like we're clean on the barrier by the looks of things and clean all the way across for our team. A six and one, and there's your new leader, ladies and gentlemen. A six and one for Aaron Palmer and Neil Antoine. A six and one. All the cattle is drawn before the rodeo. That means we put all the ear tag numbers into a hat. The cowboys and cowgirls, the judges draw it out, and that is what the steer you were assigned. So before the rodeo even starts, you know what animal you were going to be the one roping. Nod your heads is outside. Rika Wyatt charges it down hard and fast. Goes for the horn cat. Does a little bit of fishing as she only got the one horn in the loop. Got a head catch, down as it makes the turn, a roper goes up and comes up with an empty rope and they take themselves on no time. Marika Wyatt and Quinn Gavaga and a no time. Give them a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, that's all they'll be taking home. They're all trying to beat that six and one, Neil's in the lead with a six and one. Now, Daryl, your turn to shine. You got a champion on the heel and the thing, you know he can make some money. He's already in the lead in this event. Now he's here to beat his own personal time with a new header. Darryl Lustaff knocks his head, says outside, charges, throws a horn catch. Down as it makes the turn, Neil Antoine going for a set of heels, throws a loop down, and that's how it's done. But we got some penalties, boys, plus 10 on the barrier, and a plus 5 for only one hind foot. 15 seconds added on to their time. A 7 and 2 plus 15 is a 22 and 2, the running time of 22 and 2, the total running time for Darryl Lustaff and Neil Antoine. Get ourselves set up with the bull. Oh Barrier open is being stretched across that earth. Barrier box for Travis Antoine. He'll be on the head end of things on the far side of him. Jim McCall getting saw is already set up and ready to rope one of these longhorn steers. He has a nod. They're charging out of that barrier box at breakneck speed. Goes to the horn catch. Down as it makes the turn. Jim throws the loop down for a set of heels. They come up with one high foot, going to cost him a plus five, unfortunately, for Travis Antoine and Jim McCall. At eight and zero, plus five, getting the total running time of 13 and zero. At 13 and zero, the total running time, getting up for third spot so far for Travis Antoine and Jim McCall, a 13 and zero. He taught them kids how to rope, and now he's got the confidence in these youngsters to make some money. They are the two to go. Young BJ on the head end of things. Archie Williams, the young Cowboys grandfather on the far side, will be doing the healing for the young man, hoping to be the fast team. 
to make some money here this weekend. Archie's son, Neil Antoine, currently in the lead in this event. It was six and one, BJ in there, he charges up, trying to beat Uncle Neil's time, goes for a horn, gets down as it makes the turn. Archie Williams over the loop down, and that's how it's done with a plus five. Unfortunately, Archie at one hind foot, gonna give you a five second penalty there. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the team of B.J. Ednardi and his grandfather, Archie Williams. A 7 and 5, plus 5, get the total running time of 12 and 5. A 12 and 5 moves him into third spot so far. He's haul hauling a young Craig Loring down the rodeo trail to participate in the junior steer riding events. Ben Gilbaga got himself back to the barrier box, the big bay horse, and he's here to shine. Bells and heads it outside, charging down hard and fast. Across that rodeo arena, throws a long loop down over the right hand shoulder. And they end up with a no time. Give him a big round of the ball and a no time. Her Quinn Gilbaga, Jim McCall, and a no time. And riding horses, and they are the next two to go. We go. And the next team to go, Joel Lindardi, Archie Williams will be the next two. A barrier open, getting stressed across. Joel is already on that big bay on horse set up, and he's ready to rope a longhorn steer. This team, ladies and gentlemen, earlier this season roped steer together and won some money. Now they're here this weekend to take home a championship, is what they're trying to do. A six and one currently in the lead in this event. Joel is already on his head, set outside, charging down, throws a long loop for horse cat, down as it makes a turn. His grandfather, Archie Williams, throws the loop down, comes up. With one hind foot, and it's going to be a plus five, unfortunately, for one hind foot for Joel Isnardi and Archie Williams. An eight and six plus five in the total running time of 13 and six. A 13 and six in the total running time for Joel Isnardi and Archie Williams. Rika Wyatt getting herself set up in that barrier box and the rope is stretched across. This young cowgirl is ready to ride this afternoon and try to be the one that the team to beat the 6.1 you saw earlier by Aaron Palmer and Neil Antoine. Rika Wyatt, mother heads it outside, charging down hard and fast. Throws a long loop of that black steer. Down as it makes the turn. Travis Antoine throws the rope down. Comes up with one hind foot. That's going to cost him a five second penalty, unfortunately, for Rika Wyatt and Travis Antoine. A 7 and 9 plus 5 is a 12 and 9 total running time of a 12 and 9. And we go with Joel Isnardi and his cousin Jonah Antoine. They are the next two to go here this afternoon. Gives an on to the side, charging down hard and fast. Goes the horn, gets down as it makes the turn. Throw the loop down. The ropers have got him. How the steer? That's how she's done. Clean all the way across by the looks of things for the team of Joel Isnardi and Jonah Antoine. As we tabulate our time to come back to you with some more rodeo action. A seven and a zero puts him in second spot so far. A seven and zero. So officially the new leaders, the leaders of this event, Aaron Palmer, Neil Antoine with a six and one in first spot. Joe Lindard and Jonah Antoine in second with a seven and oh. BG Lindard and Jonah Antoine in third with an eight point oh. This young cowboy leader.
exactly. We don't want anybody getting hurt, so kind of back off of the fence. If you have any youngsters out there, please keep them back to the fence. We don't want anybody getting hurt at all. We do appreciate you all wanting to be up close and having a good look at the rodeo. But ladies and gentlemen, once these get close, get close to the fence, please by all means back away. Don't hang around the gates at all. If any of them bulls ever hit one of them gates, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure they pop it open. So if you're standing by the gates, kind of back away. We don't want anybody getting hurt at any time.